Hi fellow ant keepers, and welcome back to the Ants Subon YouTube channel. Today, we will be looking at how to make a Tetraponera rufinigra founding queen setup. I know some of you have been waiting for this video release. I apologize that it took three part video to get to this point, like I said in part one that it was going to be a series of video. This will be the final video on the founding stages of our Tetraponera rufinigra colony. I hope you have enjoyed watching them grow from a single fertile queen into the colony it is today. You will get a glimpse of what they have become to date, so do watch till the very end of the video. Let's get on with what we came here for. Before we begin, the idea for the setup is to make it so that the queen will be tricked into thinking she is in a tree branch. It is where they live in the wild, so it will be a good idea to mimic that environment. First off, you will need a test tube. Preferable made out of glass which allows you to have a clearer view of them. The test tube should measure no less than 150 mm in length and around 20 mm in diameter. This will be the ideal dimension for the queen to maneuver around the test tube unhindered. Tetraponera queen prefers a drier setup to any other ant species, therefore, it is optional for the typical cotton and water setup. If you want to put cotton and water at the end, it is fine just make sure it's thick and not overly wet. I personally have tried the dry setup, but do ensure you give the queen some form of hydration on the outworld or feeding area. Secondly, get a piece of cardboard. It can be any cardboard, but for easy handling, try to get the ones with 3 mm thickness. It makes cutting and forming holes easier. You want to make two cutout cardboard pieces, the shape of a coin. What you need to do is to trace a circle using the test tube. Draw around the test tube entrance and make another one next to it. Slowly trim the edges following the circle that you draw, make your cut just inside the circle. That would mean it is the size of the inner diameter of the test tube. You don't have to cut a perfect circle. Pointy edges will help you later on. It doesn't have to be perfectly rounded, it is just a guide so that you will know where to cut. Now find something sharp to penetrate the rounded cardboard pieces. It has to be sharp, so you can try using scissors to poke through. Do not use a blunt object like a pen, it will deform the cardboard if pressure is put on it. It will render it useless if the cardboard has any bent on it. If it does, you will need to make another one. The cardboard pieces have to be rigid and firm. For the following step, place the cutout pieces on the entrance of the test tube. Remember what I said about the pointy edges of the cardboard, this is where it plays the part. It will hold its place for you to slowly nudge the cardboard into the test tube using something long and narrow. You can use a chopstick, that's the best item I can think of. This is the tricky part, but you will feel the position of the cardboard as you gently nudge it in. Slowly put pressure on every corner, stop almost 2 inches from the bottom. Repeat the same step for the second cutout cardboard. Again, leave a 2 inches gap between them. I think I forgot to mention is that you can put a third piece of cardboard at the entrance like what you see at the beginning of the video. In any case, it won't make any big difference as long as the test tube is compartmentalized. Thirdly, you want to make a feeding chamber for the queen. You can use any type of container. It is a temporary outworld so to speak, you don't have to do anything fancy to it. No need for substrate and certainly no need for plants. This area will act as a place for the queen to find her food, like what she would be doing in the wild to hunt. 
but in this case everything will be prepared for her when she comes out from her nest, and she will expect food to be present. From here, I use a flexible hose around 10 millimeters in diameter to make the connection. It is around 1 inches in length. Do not make it any longer than that. The shorter the traveling distance to the outworld the better. The holes at the container are pre-drilled earlier. If you have a small acrylic outworld, by all the means go ahead. Acrylic nest holes or pre-cut usually doesn't match your test tube size. Alternately, you can use tape to secure the test tube to prevent it from dislodging. If you have a test tube adapter then it will make a good connector, but it is not always readily available for some of us. Next, I use a PE foam sheet to cut out a strip. This will act like a seal between the test tube and the flexible hose. In case you don't know what the PE foam is used for, they are good packing insulator and comes in a roll form. Alternatively, you can use rubber bands as long as it is tight fitting when you make the connection. I want to experiment with another setup method, which I have yet to try. This is a medicine box organizer. It already has seven individual compartments. The idea here is to drill holes into all the compartments. This resembles the segments within the tree branches where the queen can reside. It is an idea, which I have not tried making, but I bought the medicine organizer box anyway to experiment on later. If any of you are already ahead of me do leave your feedback on the comments below. And of course, to save all the hassle of making your own setup, you can always buy this two-segmented bamboo test tube. There are three segments bamboo types in the market, but I find that chambers are narrower. This setup will work as well, but please make sure you do not put too much water at the moisture area. The water will seep throughout the ground along the test tube floor. This causes the whole test tube to be overly moist and condensation may form. Just a few drops of water will do, an overly wet test tube will not be a suitable environment for a Tetrapanera rufinigra queen to start her colony. Just to be clear, I wanted to make sure everyone is able to make this founding nest of their own with simplicity in mind, and yet having the higher rate of success for this and species. Therefore, what you have seen is exactly what I have done for myself to ensure the success of every Tetrapanera queen that I have currently, and those that have gone to new homes. The following part is where I show you my setup. I use a small acrylic outworld, the downside is without the adapter, I end up using masking tape to hold the test tube together. It's not pretty, but it works. Anyway, it's only temporary housing for them. In terms of food for the founding queen, it's very much the same. She is not a picky eater and will eat any insect feeders you give her. As for me, I personally give her superworms as it's easier for her to eat. I like watching her clean out the inside part of the worm carcass, usually they will leave only a ring-shaped shell. I feed the founding queen once every two days, and I add more food depending on the size of her broods. She also loves sugar water, and she works tirelessly throughout the founding stages, it will be a great source of energy to keep her metabolism going. Last but not least, do wipe down the outworld to give her a clean living environment. She will bring out trash into the outworld where she will stick it at the corner, mainly larvae poops and food scraps. I clean those off every two weeks or so. As you can see, in just under three months, they have grown exponentially. I am in the midst of getting a new nest for them, and I am sure transferring them out should be a breeze. Tetrapanera rufa nigra are arboreal in nature, they live in branches of trees, I am thinking to make a bamboo style setup and maybe some hollowed out sticks. I am pretty sure they will appreciate it. I want to thank you all for following this video series. 
Please continue to watch the speed up video in their current condition. This part of the video was just added recently, and this will be the last time you will be seeing them in a founding test tube setup. I have high hopes for their future expansion. For now, it is the end of the video. Thank you for watching and Subang.